Ablak Gemara, today's daf is daf Kuf, Kuf uh, Zion. <coughs> okay, <coughs> Kuf Zion, and uh, and we're still talking about, you know, a chayker, whether he can renegotiate, and we said by a Marcus Medina, you can renegotiate, that means if it's a plague that affected the entire Area actually turned out to be in the majority area, or just a couple of four fields all around neighboring your thing that you can renegotiate. And then we said that if you uh, swap it around and you don't really follow through what the, the person said, then uh, then maybe um, even though there was a plague out there, and maybe you still have to maintain um, payment and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but anyway, we also said here that you're not allowed to swap around. What about if it benefits the owner? So then we had an argument for you allowed to swap around the benefits owner. And uh, and we said that the Rav said you're not allowed to uh, swap around, if you, for example, from wheat to barley or barley to wheat. Even we are a benefits owner. It eats less of the nutrients and perhaps it's even uh, uh, and so on. It doesn't matter. The reason why you cannot swap over is because you know, you have no idea what was uh, growing last year and there's a system and a process of what you plant in the field. So you have to make sure that you do it right. Um. Well, there are two dots, five lines on top of the page. So, um, <clears throat> our mission says that if you organize with this person that you're going to pay him to from the field, which means that from within the field, that's where you're going to grow grains, don't go ahead and plant, plant legumes, because legumes uh, eat more nutrients. Says the Gemara, Masna le Rav Yehuda, le Rav Yehuda said to uh, Rav Yehuda, um, Rav Yehuda said to Rav Yehuda, um, I say that Tvua is the end of kidneys. That if you organize to pay him out of Tvua, you could plant kidneys because there is a benefit to it because it eats less nutrients than kidneys. Not like our Mishnah. Um, not, not the of Mishnah. Tvua is the end of kidneys because kidneys eat more nutrients from the ground and therefore you're harming the, the, the person, the owner's land. <clears throat> Amale, he said to him, Kasha. doesn't bother. That's not a question at all. It depends where you're talking about. Halan v'halahu, that it, our Mishnah is an Ejisrael, which is filled with mountains, and therefore there's very little water. We're worried about you're going to deplete the nutrients from the land. So therefore the Mishnah says you should not swap from Tuhua to Kidneys, because Kidneys robs the soil from its nutrients. Masha'eng, and I'm in Bavl, and Bavl is that we learn to saturate it with water, and therefore there's no issue there whatsoever. <clears throat> And you could swap uh, from to to, to, uh, to, to um, from one to another. Thirty more of the Rabbi Barav Nachman, Yehuda said to Rabbi Barav Nachman, Rabbi Ochi, Rabbi, my brother, Hani Tachli Devei Kisne. This this crest that if it grows amongst flax. Ain't behemish from gazel. If you weed out the crest, even though it's food, it's edible. If you weed it out, there's no gazelle here whatsoever. Why? Because you're actually benefiting the owner because it, it eats into the flax. If somehow or another ruins the crop of flax, so by you taking it out, even though it's food and everything else, it's, it's, it has value. But nevertheless, you just put if it, flax is worth more, and you help the balabas out. <clears throat> But if let's say it's separate, it's standing there on the border on the boundary. Then yes, Rav Shem Gezel, you're stealing. If you take away somebody else's crop, obviously you're stealing. What happened? But if this uh, crest is already ripe and it's uh, it's already it's going to be almost completed, then we say even though it's growing amongst the flax, is a fuel to bake Even it's growing among the flax, Nami yes, Behem Shem Gezel. Here you're not benefiting the owner anymore by taking it away because whatever damage happened already happened. It happens while it's growing, but once it's full already, if you know it grew its, it's full height, it's already the damage is done. So now you're taking and you're stealing something of value. So it, you're a gun. My time and my opposite, opposite. Whatever damage was done was done. That's number one. We're gonna have a, little, a series of things that Buddha said to Robin Barab Nachman. Robin Asi, obviously they're very close. Hani Dili Dila, and he said to him, "I have three. We, they were neighbors." I have trees and you have trees. Yet some of the tree, the fruits of my tree are really yours. And with the loch, some of the fruits on your trees are actually the real, are mine. <clears throat> um, and how's it work? Uh, so, so the way to ask you the shot here is that depends where the roots are. If the roots are mainly in your field, then whatever grows on the tree is yours, even though it might be on my side, branches and everything else. 
but the roots are on my side, even though the branches are on your side, then they're mine. Okay, so he says here, um, Hani, delete the lock, but the lock delete. And he, and, um, but no, he, but a matzah, matzah, and the meaning is that the people who live in, on the borders are next to each other. Yeah. So he says over here that an Elon, uh, that whichever way the, 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 the roots are, are, that's the night is referring to the roots. Wherever way the roots are, that's who owns the the, the fruits of the tree. Is a night of the can, the can, but the can, the can. If it's night to here, it belongs to there. But if it's night to there, it belongs to there. The eat will be learned. You don't know the mates out of a tree standing there on the boundary. I'm a dab, had I've said, had night to the can, the can, but the can, the can. But I've said exactly that. However, Shmuel says, Hilkin, you divide it evenly, you divide it evenly. Mesil asks a question, how can that be divided evenly? It says, Elon ha sorry, I'll catch up. How can you say that the night to the Khan Lakan? It says Mafadis, Elon ha oimit, Allah mates a yachleku. If the Elon is right there on the boundary, then you divide it equally. So you've to the Rav, Kasham the Rav. So you want to say here, this is a beauty again of the Gemara. Your adversary is the one who's going to be defend you. Targa Shmuel, Elib the Rav, Shmuel who argues the Rav. For emphasis, the price of kunja rab, the memale kol hametzah kulei. That's talking about with the the roots are everywhere. The roots are going distributed, you know, partly into this field and partly into that field. And that's why you're splitting it. Hadimora ihochi my remember. If the roots are half, you know, spreading equally, then of course you divide the tree. What's the chiddush? Lo itzich and other. Totally tunya lechad yisa. We're talking about over here is that most of the fruits and the branches, even though the roots are are like halfway, you know, here and there, but the branches and trees. Are on one side, and a still bakati my remember what's the chiddush? We just said we go according to the roots. So if the roots are half and half, who cares on which side of the tree the majority of the fruits are growing? Then Maud, I would have thought Dumbele, he said to him, why why split the tree that what that that uh, in lengthwise that we get you know that we both get equal amount of fruits? Let's spread the cut the tree the other way. If most of the fruits are on the field on the right, let's cut the field right in the center here. And this guy will end up with most of the fruits because he said half the tree. Keep the half the tree that has very few branches and very few things. That's on your side. So he said, yeah, Dumbele, plug hockey. I, he could have said, let's divide it this way, because the fruits are growing on my side, so we have to divide it half fine, but I should keep the side with the fruits and cut it, you know, lengthwise. Let's split it the other way where each one gets half of the fruits. Tastes is very different to Gemara because he says it doesn't go after the roots, it goes after where the fruits grow. And forget, if the fruits are in the middle, and the roots are nature in the can, the can, the nature in the can, the can. Um, um, so he doesn't really care. He doesn't. Sorry, he doesn't really care about the root. Where the roots, he cares mainly about where the where the, the the branches and the fruits are growing, and that's the issue here. So Rashi holds everything's about the roots, and Tais holds everything's about where the fruits. And we're talking about where the roots are exactly in the middle, but the fruits are growing. It's another root. The roots are right in the middle, and the fruits are growing on one side and the other side. That's where the question is: what happens? But the roots themselves are right in the middle. Um, it sounds a bit impractical. The roots are under the ground. Yeah, but it's on the boundary. You, the tree grew right on the boundary. You see, it, you know, you see it sometimes, but also the creature lights, you know, right on the boundary, pushes your fence. And... He said to him, do not purchase land, this Michal Masa, that's right next to the city, that everybody can see your successor otherwise, because he believed very strongly in Ein Hara. And I'll prove it to you that Ein Hara is a real thing, but Amr Ravu, Amr Ravuna, Ravu said in the name of Rav Huna, Amr Rav, name of Rav, Osalel Adam, it is forbidden for a person, Shiyamid al Sada Chavele, was they Chavele, Bishosha Medica Mersay. Now that I start to watch the fields of your friend while they're successful, because you might uh, cast an iron heart. We'll learn about it actually the basin base in the beginning of Obasa. Why well, I need a wall by a garden. So the Ein Hara can shed it. We had a few times during the morning. Ein Hara can affect. Even though we had enough Kufi Gimbal in Bobasa, that it depends if you believe in Ein Hara, then it affects you. If it doesn't believe in Ein Hara, then we had a Machik's Rashi and Rashbam. If the word is Kokach, it doesn't affect you that much or it doesn't affect you at all. <clears throat> but nevertheless, he says over here that you're not allowed to stand and watch because the Ein Hara. So Ein Hara is real. So why tempt people? Why do you have to? Uh, why do you have to uh, show off? You know your success. The Kliyaka says in, in Chumash Dvorim by Shishi there. He says 
that the cause of all the anti-Semitism in the world is because we don't know how to, we're always extravagant and we have to show off and everything else. You know, we're living very ostentatious life. Learn how to be tough and learn how to just keep your success to yourself. You don't have to patently advertise it to everybody else and get them upset. Also, in Russia, comments from Russia, they don't hide it, don't be embarrassed of it. When you go into the merits, just add them, don't talk, show that the table shows in the city. Exactly, yeah. But that's got the uh, yeah, yeah. Yet we had in, in, we had in Saita. Um, and you remember, we had in that you know, keep it after the material, keep it, everybody brings their city to you, don't show off yeah. who has the nicest uh, sabre, or like mantle, nice. and all that. As if to say, yeah, so what happened there? I guess it's not by mitzvah, there's no in horror. It's, it sounds so counterintuitive, that whole idea. But you know what, Aini, it's not so... <clears throat> but actually, they're not they're not showing off the myths, they're showing off the Hidra of the myths. So maybe it's an Indian to... um Kiyosafim. Kiyosafim comes to Hidra, and people don't take Hidra that seriously. They, they want to do the myths, and they'll be Miyayitza. No, show that Hidra is a big Indian as well. But Aini, it's not so... And the Gemaras, let's talk to see if this is correct, that you shouldn't show off your success. But at the time, the Rabbi Abba won't found the Tamid of Rab. And Amalu, he said, My Omar Rabbi Hanikroi, how do you learn the following Psukim? It says, Borachato be here, Borachato be Sadr. If you bless in the city, bless in the field. I, I heard I wasn't there, but Rab, Rab, there was a year he, he called Boruch Baker. So I was grown around his Levaya. He said, Borachato be here, Borachato be Sadr. That Boruch was everywhere in the same Boruch. <clears throat> Or now this is a problem. The chayda, you leave your house before you come home. So the pasuk should have said borachato b'tzeisecha and then borachato b'vayecha. So how did Rav learn pshat and leave shukim? The Omer lay said him four things here. Hachi yomada borachato b'iir sheyehe beis chasarim chabeis aknesis. Your house should be as close as possible to the shul. That's one thing. Borachato b'sada when you bench in the field sheyehe nechosech so umr of your right. Yep, all good. Baruch Hashem, the Shein Chasecha, Kremli, Adafti, you should have your your estate near the city, so you don't have to schlep all the way out there. You you know you're near work. Baruch two out of two so far. Baruch Hato Bevayecha, Shalei Timse Ishtecha Sufig Nida B'Shav B'Yashcha Min Hadad. Come home after a long trip, your wife shouldn't be a Sufig Nida. Rashi says Koshka Avada Nida. Others say Avada Nida is not a problem. The problem is Sufig Nida. Avada Nida, okay, but the problem is Sufig Nida. You'll stop being married ahead to. That the year, whatever. So, therefore, you're asking you shouldn't uh, be a suffering either. Baruch Atobetesecha, that comes out of you. They should be like you in which respect? In all respects. Say in Panosa, and say in all these other brachas that you have. He said, you know, didn't say that. Ella, this is how we touch. But the bottom line would be gleaned from here is that, that the Rav himself said it's good to have your your estate near the city. What do you tell me, Amaisa, that um that you shouldn't buy that um that you said the name of Rav Einhard is a terrible thing, you shouldn't have assets or estate. The same Rav, how does that work? But before we get there, the mother brings up Yechen, and he said Abyechin had a different shot nips of him. That is El Borakhatobi Yeshi Besa Kisis from Khanchan. And we learned anything more than that. Who's an usher that you base a kiss is near your table? And Rashi explains. Sorry? You have indoor plumbing. You yeah. don't have to go out the back. And Rashi explained why Shul Chalcha is because right before eating, you have to go. Right after eating, you have to go and it's Mamash or convenient. Our basic class is like, he doesn't say anything about living next to Shul. Now, we already hadn't said to it. Rabbi Yechon the Taimei, Rabbi Yechon the Taimei, the Amr says, Har Psiyas Yesh. Rabbi Yechon the who says, and you remember when I said to the Chobbe, where the Gemara said to says that Rabbi Yechon said you can learn Yiddish guide or a from Yiddish mind from a Psula and from this Almana. Because this Almana went to the shul, to the Birch and Shul, said, What are you coming to? So many other shuls on the way. And she says, In oh, mind, if I have Halicha. And this is one of the, when the Zerboni would answer me why the Shalad doesn't talk about the Mechitz of the shul, because women didn't go to shul. See, right here in the Gemara, the failures of women did go to shul. And in fact, they, they not only went to shul, they after went to the further shul. Where they can, you know, get charlicha. So therefore, Rabbi Yechen holds it's not a good thing to live near the shul because it felt charlicha. You, you'll dab and everything else, but you know, you're missing charlicha. Anyhow, Baruch Hatov he learns 
What do you Baruch Hashem that should be blessed in the field? She ain't chasecha mishaloshi. That should be in triplets. Shlish b'tvu. You should have a third of your um, investment in tvu and grains. Shlish b'zeisim. A third in olives and shlish b'kfan and vines. Because you know prices vary, it fluctuate all the time. But if you're in different areas, this price here, let's say, falls this year, but the price of wine goes up. The price of wine goes down. The price of oil goes up. So there's always something that you know that you're doing well with. This is how you protect yourself. Good business advice. That you leave this world the way you came in this world. We were of why should you have? How can I say don't buy? How can I say that we should buy assets in the city, or you shouldn't buy because it's like you shouldn't buy near the city because I know when the city, because I know that when the Rabbi says it's a wonderful thing to have near the city. What's the problem? The problem is I know But if you don't let them see, you build a, a wall around it, there's a, a moat or whatever, a wall with a high which wall that they can't see inside, then there's no I know it. I know that you have to actually see, not just guess. Loi Kashi. Here you build a wall around it, and then you build something on top of that as well to go even higher. You raise it to such a point, such a degree, that nobody can see inside. Then, then it's much more convenient to be able to have your panasa right next to your house. You don't have to waste all this time traveling to work every day. Yeah. And um, if everybody can see, then you're inviting people to Ein Hodah. Talking about Ein Hodah, says the Gemara, the Hesed Hashem, Mimcha Kol Choy, the Davis will you all sicknesses. Amar Av, Zu, Ayin, you're talking about Ein Hodah. The Davis will remove, those, even if people are jealous of you and enemies of you, the Davis is going to remove the effect of that Ein Hodah. Rav Tame, Rav is consistent with his view. With Rav Solik Lebe Kevri, Rav went to, to the to graves. Ovid Maida Ovid, he did his thing there to find out the story of each person that was buried there, what was the cause of death. Well, he was like a coroner, but they were already dead under the ground, and he worked out, he did interesting more expression there. He did what he did, and Ashi says, he knew In other words, what else could it be? That he knew the story behind each person that was deceased, how they died, and if they died prematurely, if they died natural causes. So this is what he found out. The certain remember words of the Zoya, whatever it was, he knew. Rav knew. Uh, it's a mycenism like we had yesterday, or the mycenism He knew what to say. Um, uh, what happened was. Omar, this is what I've said. Tishan <coughs> Vitisha 99 people here out of 100, 99% died prematurely or they died from Ayn Hara. Only one person died natural causes. It's amazing. So they, they, everyone asks them, so how come people who, who descendants of Yeshua, why did they ever die? Because he says, they're Ayn Hara. And now Mazar Yeshua feels, you know, doesn't bother me. So it means that. Obviously, people are still dying. They have to. They, they'll just die natural deaths. Now, so <clears throat> now it doesn't say they, they died. Um, Rashi said they died prematurely. Didn't die prematurely. Rashi has two things: either they died prematurely, or they died. Uh, sorry, Rashi says that he made this manner. I don't mean they died prematurely. So ninety nine percent people don't live a full life. Scary thought. Please go into that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so, um, interesting. He says he died more than Achen. It was 99% and, you know, went the other way. I in horror. Anyway. Bye to the Gemara. Maybe that's why people didn't live so long in those days as they live today because there was a lot of envy and greed out there because people had service all the time. You say, Baruch Hashem, everybody has their own in Yonim and the letter people live. Shmuel says, Zeharuah. Shmuel says, nah, nothing to do with Ayin Hod. He didn't believe in Ayin Hod. Shmuel says, it's the Ruach. And Shmuel says, it's the wind. It's the wind that that, tra- that causes all the sicknesses. Now, we had in, in, um, in Misha Ochzu that the wind can actually carry, you know, carry diseases, which is something we only found out in the 1800s, but the Gemara talks about how wind... You know, the air you know, passes the disease around. But he also knows the wind does not let the flesh, you know, um, cure itself and so on. The wind itself causes all kinds of problems. <clears throat> um, Shmuel was adapted. And Shmuel said, 
Everything has to do with the wind. Ulushmul, Harikaruge Malchur, by people who were killed by the king, that was, you know, they were with a sword, decapitated, whatever it is, or they were captured, uh, a knife pierced them. Where did the wind come in there? Halaknami. Because he says Hakil Baruch, everything, he doesn't say majority, some Hakil. Halaknami, he loves Zika of the Sum of Achai. I'm a doctor, I have a cure for everything. It wouldn't have been for the problem of the wind. Why can't they just put in this, you know, the room of Shai? You remember, we talked around him a number of times. You want to have, make sure he's sterilized and there's no wind. Bring him into this marble room and then do whatever you have to do. But Shavuot could have saved so many people then. Anyway, but he said it's the wind. Rabchina says, Zut Sina. Rabchina says it's actually the cold that causes people to die. And we had in Ksuvah, Dama Rabchina. Rabchina said, Hakoel Bidei Shamaim, that everything is up to the Abish, the Chutz. In one place says Yiddish Shemaim, and nobody says Chutz Metzinim Pachim. Machlech is showing you what exactly Tzinim Pachim is. Rashi holds Tzinim Pachim is one word. Rashi holds that it's the wind, a cold wind. It's a wind, but not like Shmuel says that any wind. It's a cold wind that's bad for you. And Tzinim learns here in Shmuel says that the Tzinim Pachim is uh, cold or heat, fever or cold. Both of them. Are bad for you. Shemem it says, and the other one says, "How could the Shemaim chutz me?" Shemaim argues with that because they say that you could protect yourself from the cold. And the place of the exuvus, protect yourself from the from the wind. Shemem it says, "Tzinim pachim b'derech ikeish." That tzinim pachim, you know, the way that makes stumbling. Shemem and after yechim him. If you're careful, you could protect yourself from that. So that's what causes people to die. He said, "Oh, you know what it is? It is the tzoyer. It is the um, the mucus. Whatever it is." In your ear, you know, you have a lot of it, it's bad for you. And a little bit is good for you. So somehow or another, that causes somebody's demise. Now, below this says, Zumara, it's the, it's the bladder. The time you learn, Nami Hochi, Machla Zumara. We also learned that Machla, we had this in the end of the day in Achaybo, that, you know, breakfast, how important, we'll see now how important breakfast is, because Machla, and, and take your protection from machla. Machla, what is machla? The sickness is dafka in the bladder. Okay? All kinds of sicknesses. Why is this called by the generic name machla? So many elements. She machla If there are issues there with the bladder, it affects your entire person. Why is it called machla? The machla is 83. 83 sicknesses emanate from the mother. The kulan, pas shachris bemelech. If you eat breakfast, uh, bread and salt, the ketan shomayim, a jug of water, mevet lossen. It will cancel the effects of that. And um, Rashi says, interesting. And um, first, you want to know what Rashi gets wrong. Rashi says, ketan shomayim, lefisha ain't la yayin. No, the yayin is definitely better. If you, if you can drink wine first thing in the morning, it's the best thing you can have. If you can't, a whole pack of water. Others wonder where Rashi gets it. Where is there even a remnant for that? Maybe it's just water. And others like, oh, it's only water. But actually, says wine is good for you. Talk about my learn, especially for breakfast. You can have any tears towards wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Talk about my learn. Water was filthy. People dumped refuse in the water. I mean, it had well water. They, they all used to well, use well water. water. Drank wine because it was more pure than water. If you well, maybe they had no access water, to wells. Water. It could be. Talk about my learn. You give us more number of past shachis that thirteen things said about regarding breakfast. Number one, matzelas min hachama it protects you from the heat. Umin atzilah we said four from sicknesses, from you know fever and from cold. Umin azikin from the winds, which Rav which Shmuel says a big issue. Umin hamazikin from the mazikin, which was always bad. The Ram always has a problem with everyone says the mazikin. Umakim as pesi it makes fools smart. Because now that you had a breakfast, you you can you're more galasin, you're more you can more settled, you can actually think straight. But if you don't eat breakfast, then you can't really you're you're always nervous and you can't really think straight. <clears throat> uh, and now you can even defend yourself in an entire because you can think straight. And even if you're saying the truth, if you cannot think straight, it comes out wrong. So it's much more calm. Lil my so breakfast is critical. Lil my tidy, you can learn tidy much better with Alamid and you can give shiurim. But Vodav Nishmoyim, people actually listen to what you say because you co- you're coherent. And with Tamudim is kind of Yodai, and when you learn, it actually remains with you. And the Ain Besori Maila Hevel, your body doesn't generate steam. And the Niska Ishtoi, and if you, of course, you're settled, you can even, if you see your wife, you might even have a, a desire to um, to um, to have a relationship with her. But what the she by that is the rest of the day you might work with other women. You have no no tibes because you're very well settled at home. 
Plus, it kills any of those insects inside your intestines. So, breakfast is an unbelievable thing. You don't, you, there's no reason for you to be jealous because you're a happy person. Happy people are not jealous. Who's jealous? Those are people who, go, who feel unhappy and they exactly and they think someone else is, you know, is better. If you're content with life, then life is so beautiful. It allows Abba to come in. People say, sixty people can run, yet they can never catch up to somebody. The Mitzafrakara who ate breakfast in the morning had a sandwich. Or in the morning, somebody ate breakfast in the morning is the best thing. say hashka and get up in the early morning. eat the kites in the summer, but to protect you from the heat and the winter because of the cold. How do I know that? It says, you ask me, so how do I know that? There's actually a posseg that, that alludes to that. It says in the posseg, they won't be hungry, they won't be thirsty, they won't be beaten by the hot sun, the white cocker won't be affected by the hot sun, because they're not hungry, not thirsty, they're all good. So you say from there, but I interesting. He asked him, how do I know and he all along knew the Pusik. So he's playing, he's playing with him. He said, You know from there, but I'll tell you where I know from. It says a Pusik. It says, um, you, know, um, you bring from Tanakh. I have a Pusik in the table. You'll serve the Abish. He will bless your bread. Best me mechan your water. Bavada is Krishna. Avoida is Krishna. And then with Borich Lachmech, he will bench your bread. Best me mechan your water. To pass the Melech, we keep in Shemaim again. Then what, what you're going to achieve is Vahasi Raisi Machla Mikibecha. We'll move all six to this. On the Guru Ravacha Mishakhar, Ravada Mishakhar, Ravuda said, Ravada, his job was to measure a land survey. That was his job, a land survey. He had to measure the, the tracts of land. He says, there's certain things that have to be very particular, and certain things, no. Like Tzazalzal bin Mishikhasa. Do not be, um, do not take it lightly when you measure tracts of land, even if it's a small piece. The Chalpurta Purta Chazi Lechurk Vodishka. Because every piece of land, okay, you can't have a big wheat belt or you know, a little piece of land, but you can build over, you can buy, you can grow saffron. You know how expensive saffron is? I think in Australia it's like $30,000 a kilo of saffron, the yellow, the real saffron. So, uh, so even a little tract of land is very valuable. So, therefore, take it seriously and measure it. Gnoi, be exact. Another thing he said to him, Dalad Amazdan Nigra, along the canal, along the, you have a little canal there. And you people use that water for irrigation, a small canal. So, you leave four Amas on each side of the Anigra, you leave it empty so people can walk along. You don't have to be exact. You don't have to be exact. The Anhara, but if it's near along the river, which is the main source of water, not just for a few people, a Masamaim is one of these channels that come off. But if it's the main source of water, the river, then Loitam Don't measure at all, but just look with your eye and you know, you know be more generous. Because when you measure, sometimes you're being less generous because it's exactly for I'm not. You know, look at uh, people walk comfortably back and forth. So, and they because if they're going to use it, if the farmers are going to use the land to grow things, it's going to eat into the water and it's going to. Um, it's going to affect the, the, the channels and so on. Who benefits from the Anigra? Only the people, you know, the few locals there. But the river is the entire world. Rabbi Ami said, He said that if you have over here a river, you have trees alongside the river, you have to cut them down. And the reason why you have to cut them down is because you have these barges that go up and down the river and they would have, and, and because it's so narrow, they would have people walking along and schlepping the ropes. So they have to be able to walk the shoulder um, width of the shoulders. They should be able to walk with no obstructions. So you have to make sure that there are no trees uh, growing ar- uh, along there. <clears throat> so you have to cut up, and you don't know which side they're going to be walking on, or this side, that side. So both sides have to be cleared. He was very machmed. Cut. He used to cut. 16 amas. He wouldn't let the farmers, even though they had farms all the way up to the water, he wouldn't let them plant within 16 amas. Like a Rosh Rabim, you know, for Hilchus Shabbos or Stamash Rosh Rabim. Um, also, a lay B'nai Mishra, the people of Mishra, when they heard it, they were all farmers, they, they owned land, and he didn't let them for 16 amas, the length, the length of the river. That means they lost so much land. So what they do is, they beat them up. 
Busa, but he thought Kishus Rabbi. Well, he was making a mistake. Hasabinu Kolai, which Rabbi you need to the width of the you're going back and forth and you have animals. Here, the whole purpose is that you schlep those ropes or the barges. It's enough just the width of the shoulders. He had a forest, a good at the water, right up to the riverbanks. This is Abba Rabbuna. Omrele told him, You should cut. We said, have the width of the shoulders. Omrele said to him, there's a neighbor up north. There's a neighbor down south. What's the point of me cutting if the people that are the barges can't get the, to my property anyway because the property above and below, they're not going to cut the forest down. They're not eating the goyim and actually part of the royalty. They're not in the government. They're not going to. How can he say that? We have a rule of see this culture, culture before you can demand the neighbors to go ahead and cut. He has to be in a role model. First, you should ask, first cleanse yourself and then talk to others. If you want to give people Muslim, make sure that you behave properly yourself. So he said, Hossam Abba, the father to be Pazig Rafil Habba. The father belonged to the family, and they were a very strong um, person people, and they were they were not eating, they were not gonna follow the rules. So he said, Well, but he kaitsu kayatsna. If they cut, fine, I'll also cut. Oh, but they like kaitsu, but they're not gonna cut. On my acres, why would I cut? The Imam Dhu Shlay and Miss Dagi Luhu. That if, even if, if if they want to bring these ropes, they're gonna be stuck over there by these properties. If you miss Tagalu, if they cut it, then people can benefit walking up and down. But if they don't cut it, the loy miss Tagalu, then they won't be going on my side. Because what are they gonna do? <laughs> How are they gonna get to my property if there's a forest blocking in between? Rabba Baba is finished with a story, a very sad story. Rabba Baba Nachan have a cause of Baba, Rabba Nachan was traveling. Uh, this is a different Rabba, not Rabba Baba Nahu, Rabba Nachan. He was traveling on his boat. Chaza who Abba the Kaya He saw this forest right there, and his people couldn't, uh, I guess, help tug the boat. Amalu the man whose forest is this? Amalu the Rabba Nahu. He didn't cut back. Omar, he said, it says in the posse, Viyad ha sorry vaskanim hoisa bimal azeh harishayna. The people who went from Bubble earlier, 20 something years earlier, came to Israel, they married out and everything else. So Ezra sort of said that. That the hands of all of these people, they, that they were the first ones who were who were moyo, who did the wrong thing, and um, um, and and therefore he's very upset. He didn't know that the people in north or south the whole whole chesh, but he just saw that nobody cut there, and, and that the rabbi of should live by example. So Amalu he told his people, Kaitsu, I don't don't have permission. You just do what you have to do. Kaitsu, they went and they cut down the the, the area in front of Rabbi Bunu's property. Also Rabbi Bunu actually found the kites. He found that they chopped his trees down. And the, the Farshim say there was some fruit bearing trees there as well. And we learned before that, you know, Baba Kama, he says, of course, the Farshim. Oh, my man, Katya. He said, whoever cut my trees down, Katya Anfa, his branches should be cut down. And what do you think happened? Omru, they say, all the years that Rabba was alive, all his children died in his lifetime. We'll stop here. Not a good way to finish. Good job,